Today, I want to, we're going to be looking at the 23rd Psalm today. But before we get into that, let, let me share with you something. You know, I have always had trouble with a weight problem growing up. I know you look at me and say, I don't have a trouble You're with weight problem. Uh -huh. When <laughs> my sister-in-law over here is going, yeah, she knows me for years. She's here with us too, her husband too. <laughs> Darla, she's shaking her head, yes, I know. But uh, when I was growing up, that's where you knew me now. I was always made fun of because I was skinny all through school, man, and all through high school. I, I got made fun of all the time. And when I become adult, I started gaining weight, and I've weighed as high as 256 pounds. And, and believe me, through the years, I've lost hundreds of pounds, you know, up and down, up and down. We've all gone through that. And I still struggle with my weight, and, and that's one of those things. About seven years ago, I got down to about 215 and stayed there for quite a few years. But about seven years ago, I went to my doctor, and he said, your cholesterol is too high. And I went on a low cholesterol diet, and uh, it helped me. My cholesterol came down, so I never did have to get on any kind of medication. And after about a year, my weight came down, and my weight has stayed down. So I constantly have to watch my weight. And that's one of those things that I have to battle. And I only did it because of my health. I wasn't thinking about my weight so much. But that was a blessing. But I, I found this, and it kind of goes along with the 23rd Psalm, but it don't really. But I thought I'd read this to you today. This sounds like something Terry would pull. But anyway, <laughs> I want to read this to you. And you understand, it. I, I thought of me when I read this. And, and the reason I thought of that is you have to understand, what, the reason I always had trouble with weight, I love black late-night snacks. Now, most yeah, people... Yeah, can you, eat a, a night snack? Wait a minute, you don't need a late night snack like I used to like to do. I, I would sit down, you know, with some Oreo cookies. The whole wait a minute now, you listen to this. The whole pack. And, and that bluebell ice cream. You know, I'd start out with one bowl, but I'd run out of cookies and I'd go, well, one bowl's enough. And and then I got real smart, you know. I thought then what I'd do is get me some that light bluebell. That would be less calories. And I tried that. But then I got to thinking, well, you know, it's less calories. I'd get another bowl. So I'd have two bowls to with those cookies. So that didn't work. So anyway, I, I thought I'd read this to you today. It's called the 23rd pound. My appetite is my shepherd. I shall always want. It maketh me to sit down and stuff myself. It leadeth me to my refrigerator, refrigerator repeatedly. Amen. It leadeth me in the path of Burger King for a whopper. It destroyeth my shape. Gain though I knoweth, I gaineth. I will not stop eating. For the food tasteth so good. The ice cream and cookies, they comfort me. When the table is spread before me, it excited me. For I knoweth that soon I shall dig in. As I fill up my plate continuously, continuously, my clothes runneth smaller. Amen. Surely budges and excess weight shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall be fat forever. Anyway. Remember, Grub Sunday is next week. Yeah. <laughs> I want a copy of that. Right. I want a copy of that. Okay. I want to talk today about the grind of uncertainty. After you heard that, you're wondering. The grind of uncertainty. <clears throat> We're going to be reading from the 23rd Psalm. If you want to look that up there. And I think you'll know this. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the <coughs> Lord forever. Now that's the real 23rd Psalm. Amen. Not the 23rd pound. You know, nobody can deny that the 23rd Psalm is the most familiar, best loved portion 
of the book of Psalms, perhaps in the entire Bible. It has endured itself to people in every circumstance in life. A soldier in battle, fearing injury and possible death. A grieving widow standing before a fresh grave, wondering how she can go on with her life. A guilty wanderer for seeking forgiveness and direction in life. A lonely stranger looking for love and companionship. The suffering saint strapped in bed with pain. The orphan and the forgotten. The depressed and the jobless. The prison inmate and the persecuted. The prodigal and the divorced. All have felt the stinging daily grind of uncertainty. To each one and thousands more, Psalm 23 brings comfort and peace. When the chips are down and our hearts are heaviest, it is to this magnificent Psalm of the Shepherd we most often turn. You know, the preschooler knows it by heart, yet it is the silent partner of the retired, and it's always fitting at a funeral. From the cradle to the grave, Psalm 23 provides comfort, timeless comfort and endless assurance for those who lack a sense of feeling of God's power. But God's power is so amazing and so alive. No doubt you have encountered the daily grind of uncertainty. Maybe through a career choice, a direction in life, maybe a wrong direction in life, a purpose in pain, job security, financial pressures, physical handicaps, and a dozen other confusing puzzles not quickly or easily solved. One cannot read the 23rd Psalm without realizing that it was written from the viewpoint of a sheep with its shepherd observing and recording its feelings. Consider some of the differences between the helpless sheep and God's frail children. Think about how much we are like sheep in God's eyes. When I was working on this sermon, I thought of you, Emmanuel. <laughs> he raised his sheep. And I thought of him. And then I thought about how much we are just like sheep. Now he's back there grinning. He's going, I know sheep. I heard we like sheep. Well, we're going to look at that and see how much we are like sheep. Sheep lack a sense of direction. Now, unlike cats and dogs, sheep can get easily lost even in their own territory. So it is with Christians as believers. We cannot guide ourselves. We must rely completely on the word of God and the voice of the shepherd, our Savior. Now the word of God is the Bible. We must completely rely on God's word and upon the shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. We must listen to his voice. Because when we don't do that, when we don't depend upon God's word, when we don't read it and meditate and study it, we're going in the wrong direction. We're lost, aren't we? We're going. We have a sense of the wrong direction. Just like sheep, we get lost. So we must depend upon our shepherd, which is the Savior, Jesus Christ. And then sheep are defenseless. Now, most animals have rather an effective means of defense. They either have sharp claws or, or, or sharp teeth or, or speed or ability to hide or keenness of smell. They have good sight, great hearing, and great strength. But sheep are awkwardly weak and they're ignorant and they have spindle legs and tiny hoofs and they are pitifully slow, very slow. They're not strong. They're not powerful. They're just weak and they're ignorant. They don't even have an angry growl. Sheep are defenseless. The only sure protection for sheep is an ever-watchful shepherd. The shepherd, by being well-armed with his heavy club, known as his rod, 
He could give death-dealing blows to a lion or a bear or a tiger or even to a thief to protect his sheep. So it is with a Christian. To be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power because we are defenseless without the good shepherd. We are defenseless. We have no hope without God in our life. We are hopeless without him. And then sheep are easily frightened. They're easily frightened. Being ignorant and small in size and very much aware of their weakness, sheep find comfort only in their shepherd's presence. Psalm 27.1 also refers to this type of shepherd-lord relationship which we have with God. Let's look at this verse here. Psalm 27.1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? If the Lord is our light, and Jesus is the light, he is the light of the world, if he is our light and he is our salvation, who do we have to fear? If he lives in your heart and he's your savior, what do you have to be afraid of? There's nothing you have to be afraid of. Because he is our stronghold in our life. We do not have to be afraid because we have him in our life. Sheep are by nature unclean, unclean. You see, other animals, they lick and they scrape and they roll in the grass to cleanse themselves. But not sheep. They don't do that. They will remain filthy indefinitely unless the shepherd cleanses them. We too, by nature, are unclean and filthy. Without the tender shepherd's cleansing, we would remain dirty and filthy. Let's, let's look at this. In 1 John, look at 1 John, the first chapter, the 7th through the 9th verse, and I'll prove to you what it says in the Word of God. 1 John, first chapter, 7 through 9. It says, But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. But if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He says, if we walk in the light, now remember, Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world. He is the light because he came and he died on that old rugged cross for our sins and forgave us. And when they buried him in that tomb, he conquered our sins. He conquered death and he came back alive. He is the light of the world. He is the light. So if we put our faith and our trust in him and accept him and we fellowship with him and we fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus Christ can purify us from all of our sins, from every one of them. But we can't claim that we don't have sin in our life. We can't. We deceive ourselves. We lie to ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Every one of us is meant for sin. Every one of us. And even though we've been forgiven of our sins, and he saved us, we have eternal everlasting life. Every day we make mistakes, but thank God we're forgiven and we have the assurance of salvation in our heart. And all we got to do is say, Lord, help me today to make it. Take care of me. And he will. He will take care of us because he loves us and he cares for us. Now sheep, they cannot find food or water. While most animals have a keen sense of smell, Sheep depend upon their shepherd completely. Completely. If sheep are left alone, they will eat poisonous weeds and die. And when one does it, the others will begin to follow right along and do the same thing. Isn't that something? Again, we can see how much we are like sheep. As children of God, we are equally dependent upon God. Why are we dependent upon God? Because when we try to do it our way 
And we say, I don't want to do what God wants me to do. I want to do it my way. And we go the wrong direction. What happens to us? We usually end up in trouble, don't we? We end up in trouble and end up living in sin. Just like sheep. We can't make it on our own. We have to depend upon the shepherd. We must depend upon God. And then the sheep's wool does not belong to the sheep. While sheep may produce wool, the shepherd owns the wool. You see, all, all spiritual production in life of the Christian belongs to the Lord. The Lord, by means of the Holy Spirit, provides for all such production. Now, we can come. Here's an example. We can come and worship you. Okay? We can invite people to come. We can pray for people that are lost, and we can invite them. We can do everything we can to live the Christian life. But, you see, it's the shepherd, the Holy Spirit, is the one that has to move in our heart. Our job is to invite people to come to church. Our job is to live the Christian life. Our job is to share our faith. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts people and brings them to Him. We are totally dependent upon Him. So all production of the Christian life is totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit. In every way, you see that we are indeed His people and the sheep of His pasture. In fact, let's look at that. It's in Psalm 103. Psalm 103. He says, know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His, we are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Think about that. Know that the Lord is God. We need to know that He is Lord God. He is the Lord over all. He is God. It is He who made us. He created us. He made us in His own image. He made us. And we are His. We belong to Him. We don't belong to ourselves. Just like the sheep. The wool on the sheep doesn't belong to the sheep. It belongs to the shepherd. We as Christians belong to God. We are His. We are His people. And we are the sheep of His pasture. We belong to the Lord. And He watches over us. Jesus always cares for His sheep. The shepherd loves His flock. Just as Jesus loves us, the pastor of a church is to watch over and to care for His flock, which is the congregation that God has given Him. I have to watch over you and love you the way Christ loves you. Like many of the Psalms, Psalm 23 states its case in the very first verse and simply verifies it in the remainder of the psalm. The key thought is this. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want for anything. I shall lack nothing. No uncertainty should frighten me. Now here is the way the theme of Psalm 23 is played out of David's famous song. I shall not lack rest or provision. Why? He makes me lie down in green pastures. I shall not lack peace. Why? He leads me beside the quiet waters. I shall not lack restoration or encouragement when I faint, fail, or fall. Why? He restores my soul. I shall not lack guidance or fellowship. Why? He guides me in the paths of righteousness. I shall not lack courage when my way is dark. Why? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I shall not lack companionship. Why? 
for thou art with me. I shall not lack constant comfort. Why? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I shall not lack protection or honor. Why? Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I shall not lack power. Why? Thou anointest my head with oil. I shall not lack abundance. Why? My cup overflows. I shall not lack, lack God's everlasting presence. Why? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall not lack security. Why? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Millions of people know that the Lord is a shepherd. But they really don't know that he is their shepherd. Who, by the way, is your shepherd? To whom do you trust when you're feeling caught in the daily grind of uncertainty? To whom do you turn for direction? You have many choices. Do you first go to your pastor, to a close friend, to your coach, to a teacher, to somebody you work with? How easy to forget that they are sheep too. Yes, they're sheep also. As important and as necessary as each of these people may be, they can never take the place of the good shepherd in your life. When you are placed in Christ's care, you can say with deep abiding certainty, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. God knows how to deal with his children. He knows how to deal with you, and he knows how to deal with me. His dealings follow you all the days of your life. Your circumstances right now are a part of his plan for you. Think about that. That's hard sometimes to deal with, but they are. This wonderful psalm concludes with a familiar and comforting thought. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalmist is not referring to a place as much as as he is to a person. Notice that the 23rd Psalm begins and ends with the Lord. The Lord. <clears throat> David longs to be in his Lord's house because he could be in the Lord's presence. You see, the ultimate goal in David's heart was a face-to-face -face relationship with his Lord forever. Instead of uncertainty, he had confidence. We as Christians will enjoy a never-ending fellowship with God the moment we draw our last earthly breath. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ promises those who believe in him. Not, I hope so, but I know. I know for sure that Jesus lives in my heart. I know for sure that I'm going to heaven. In him, we truly have everything that we need. Who is your shepherd? I pray that it is Jesus Christ. If not today, you can make him your shepherd through a simple prayer just like this. Let's pray. Dear Lord, my Father God in heaven, I know that you are my shepherd because right now, I ask you to come in my heart and forgive me of my sins and take complete control of my life. I put my faith and my trust in you. I know that you died on the old rugged cross just for me. So at this moment in my life, I can be saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Kent is going to lead us in the cowboy point. Before he does that, I want to tell you right back here on the table, there's this orange sheet, and it says, this is my decision today. If you pray to receive Christ, you check that. If you'd like to join this cowboy church, you check that. 
Put your name and information and phone number, and I'll be glad to contact you. You put in that little offering bucket back there. You know, we don't pass offering plate here. That's where we put our offering. You put this in there, or you can hand it to me, and I'll be glad to make a contact with you. Ken? During this, during this last Valentine series, I kind of got a little romantic here. Well, I've got another one here I'd like to dedicate to my wife. <laughs> Since a lady pauses briefly as her eyes well up with tears, for she thinks she's lost her beauty to the hardships and the years. She remembers all the good times when she was just a girl and kept her cowboy smiling with her laughing eyes and curls. Now her face is showing wrinkles and her hair is turning gray. She wonders where that young girl went. She was here just yesterday. Then her cowboy steps beside her, puts his arms around her waist, turns her ever gently, brushes teardrops from her face. There's something I must tell you as I've held you through the years. Let me tell you what I see, for I will be your mirror. I see the blue skies where other skies are gray, and I see the children laughing in the meadows where they play. I can see the cattle grazing just below the rise. I can see a rainbow from the twinkle in your eyes. I can see the sweet grass swaying gently in the breeze, and I can see the sunrise through the golden aspen trees. I can see your heartbeat where eagles cast their spell, and I can see your sweet love as deep as any well. So when you stop to ponder on reflections you hold dear, just remember, darling, I will be your mirror. Thank you.